Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I have for you another idea for masculine cards. I made this card a few years ago for my old blog, but I have never made a video. This card has a lot of elements. It's a mixed media chic card with a lighthouse. So let's get into the products, but it's quite a lot. I will try to be quick, but there are chapters in the description if you want to skip. The stamp set I'm using is the Shine Bright stamp set by Avery L. I absolutely love this stamp set. It's one of my favorites, but it's an old stamp set, so I'm not sure if it's still available. I have a white cardstock from a UK company called Paper Mill Direct and a card base that I pre-made. I also will be using an acetate, which I forgot to include here. And I will be die cutting the images from the stamp set and a circle for the shaker element. And I also have few sequins and beads. For the coloring, I'm using a lot of things. I call this video mixed media card and I mean it. To color the lighthouse, I'm using coloring pencils. For the stamping, I'm using the VersaFine ink in Onyx Black. There is also one stamp with the rays of light that I will be stamping with a yellow ink from my favorite things. I also will be using a black distress ink for the ground, watercolors for the sky, and for the background behind the shaker element, I'm using a yellow acrylic paint. There are a few more products that I will mention along the way, and you can find the product list over on my blog. So I'm starting with the backgrounds, as those need some drying time. First I painted the background behind the shaker, and I painted it directly onto the card base. I'm using a yellow acrylic paint for this. For my original card, I think I used a yellow cardstock, but I don't have that cardstock anymore. I mainly covered the part where the shaker window will be, the rest I left unpainted. Next I die cut the circle for the shaker part, and then I painted the sky using watercolors. Just a messy watercoloring. I was only careful with the water, as this is not a watercolor cardstock. And also I should have done this after I did the ground, because I had to wait for the sky to dry. And talking about the ground, you can use watercolors for the ground, but since I call this the mixed media card, I'm changing it up and I'm using the black suit distress ink. I already had a stencil created when I made this card a few years ago. These are two post-it notes put together and cut into a shape of a hill. I attached it where I wanted the top of the hill to be, and then I applied the ink. I let it dry and worked on the lighthouse. First I stamped the images using the VersaFine ink in Onyx Black, and for the rays I used a yellow ink from my favorite things. As I said earlier, this stamp set is quite old and therefore might no longer be available, but I really like it, it's one of my favorite stamp sets and I like the card I originally made. So I wanted to share it with you, my cards where I use stamp sets supposed to be more like ideas and inspirations that you can make with different products as well and make it original for you. Next, I started coloring the stamped images. I used the Prisma coloring pencils. I will show you some of the coloring. I didn't do anything special. I used blues for the stripes on the lighthouse and grays for the sides to give it a little bit of dimension. I used grays also for the stones, yellow for the windows and browns for the roof. I was actually really disappointed with my blog post for the card on my old blog because I wasn't thorough with the information about what colors I used for the coloring or what I put behind the shaker part and so on. So this time on my new blog you will find all this information. I try to do that for each of my cards. The link to my blog is in the description. For the rest of the coloring I will play some music and I will be back once I'm done.
So the coloring is done, I run the images through the die cutting machine, the lighthouse didn't cut properly at the bottom, there is nothing wrong with the die, I just didn't get it properly through the die cutting machine, so I cut it with my scissors and the same I did for the rays of light because those do not have a coordinating die. Next, I stamped a few birds from the stamp set directly onto the background. These are easy to draw, but it's great to have a stamp set for them. And then I stamped at the greeting. If you are making a Father's Day card, just use a sentiment for that. But I used the Happy Birthday stamp that is part of the stamp set with the lighthouse. This one is actually funny because I stamped the words in wrong order. I stamped birthday happy. It just fits better. And I only realized it when I was doing this voiceover. You know, I prefer the main words to be more fancy and the word usually happy to be in a print form. That's how I got confused. And as I said, it fits better. But I corrected it, which I will show you at the end of this video. But moving on, I adhered an acetate on the back of the panel with the die cut circle. I used a liquid glue for it. I put the glue also around the circle, but not too close to the edges as I didn't want it to seep out. And then I placed an acrylic block over it to keep it in place. Next, I adhered all the images. The fence I adhered using a glue directly onto the background at the top of the hill. I already placed a double-sided foam tape on the back of the lighthouse. I also adhered the rays of the light on the top of the lighthouse. And one of the pile of the stones I attached to the side of the lighthouse and I adhered a foam tape on the back of it. I adhered the lighthouse on top of the hill in the middle. I wanted the rays of light to be in the middle of the circle. And the second pile of the stones I adhered below the lighthouse using a foam tape. I also die cut a moon, which is part of the stamp set, and a cloud, which is from under the stamp set, but I thought it fit well. And I adhered those using a liquid glue. Next, I worked on the shaker element. I attached a double sided foam tape on the back of the panel. I did this off camera as it's not exciting and you do not need to see me struggling with it. I used two layers of the tape so the shaker elements will have enough space to move. And then I placed the sequins and beads in the middle of the yellow part on the card base. I started with the sequins and created sort of a well so the beads do not run around. And lastly, I carefully attached the panel on top of the card base. It's a good idea before you remove the release paper from the double-sided foam tape to check if the panel fits and then adhere it onto the card base. And since I messed up the greeting, I had to correct it. I just created a banner where I heat embossed the sentiment with a white embossing powder, which was actually the original idea, but I was too lazy to heat emboss and now I had to do it anyway. I cut a fishtail on the right side of the banner and to adhere it I used a liquid glue and I tucked it behind the lighthouse. If you want you can also use a foam tape but I want it to be tucked behind the lighthouse. So here is the finished card. I really like it. It brings me back when I made it originally. I can't believe I made that mistake with the greeting. But as I said, in my opinion, the word birthday is more fitting above the word happy than below it. Look wise, it feels more natural. And I hope you will try something similar. You do not need this exact stamp set. For example, my last week's card would be perfect shaker card as well. However, if you would like to see different ideas for masculine cards that you can also use as Father's Day card, you can check out the playlist that is on your screens now. I will also include the link to it in the description below. So that is all for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I would really appreciate if you liked this video and subscribed as well. And I will see you in my next video.